H3 of glycolysis is the energy yielding phase. In this stage, aldehyde group is oxidized to an acid are accompanied by liberation of large amounts of potentially useful energy. This stage consists of the following two reactions. Step 1 is the oxidation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to 1,3-biphosphoglycerate. Step 2 is the conversion of 1,3-biphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate. Step 1 is the oxidation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to 1,3-biphosphoglycerate. This step involves oxidation of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate to 1,3-biphosphoglycerate by the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate also form 1,3-biphosphoglycerate via glyceraldehyde 3-phosphoglycerate. The second phosphate is supplied by phosphoric acid instead of ATP. Hydrogen is released, which reduces NAD to NADH2. This is the only oxidative step of glycolysis. Second step is the conversion of 1,3-biphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate. This step involves conversion of 1,3-biphosphoglycerate to 3-phosphoglycerate by the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. One phosphate group is removed from 1,3-biphosphoglycerate from carbon number 3, which is transferred to ADP to form ATP. This step involves the formation of ATP at substrate level. This is the first ATP molecule, which is produced at substrate level in glycolysis. At this stage of glycolysis, each NADH produces three ATP molecule. NADH is produced in the presence of oxygen. Since two molecules of triose are formed per glucose molecule, hence two NADH are produced and eventually generating six molecules of ATP. The second reaction will produce one ATP. Two molecules of substrate will produce 2 ATP. Net gain at this stage per molecule of glucose oxidized is 8 ATP molecules. Stage 4 of glycolysis is the recovery phase. In this stage, phosphate group is recovered from 3 phosphoglycerate. Two molecules of 3 phosphoglycerate, which are the end product of the previous stage, still retains the phosphate group originally derived from ATP in stage 1. Body wants back the 2 ATP spent in first stage for 2 phosphorylations. This is achieved by the following three reactions. Step 1 is the conversion of 3 phosphoglycerate to 2 phosphoglycerate. Second step is the conversion of 2 phosphoglycerate to phosphoenol pyruvate. Third step is the conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate. Fourth and last step is the conversion of pyruvate to lactate. Step 1 is the conversion of 3 phosphoglycerate to 2 phosphoglycerate. This step involves conversion of 3 phosphoglycerate to 2 phosphoglycerate by the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. Second step is the conversion of 2 phosphoglycerate to phosphoenol pyruvate. T step involves conversion of 2 phosphoglycerate to phosphoenol pyruvate by the enzyme enolase. This reaction involves dehydration. A molecule of water is removed in this reaction. Now, what is sodium fluoride? Sodium fluoride is an anticoagulant used for the collection of blood sample required for blood glucose analysis. This sodium fluoride inhibits enolase enzyme to prevent the progression of glycolysis and to preserve 
glucose in blood sample. Third step is the conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate. This step involves conversion of phosphoenol pyruvate to pyruvate by the enzyme pyruvate kinase. One phosphate group is removed from phosphoenol pyruvate, which is transferred to ADP to form ATP. This step involves formation of ATP at substrate level. This is the second molecule of ATP produced at substrate level. This step is the third irreversible step of glycolysis. This step can be reversed by two enzymes of gluconeogenesis, which are pyruvate carboxylase and pyruvate carboxykinase. In this stage, two molecules of ATP are produced per molecule of glucose oxidized. Fourth step is the conversion of pyruvate to lactate. This step involves conversion of pyruvate to lactate by the enzyme pyruvate dehydrogenase. The significance of this reaction is that, in aerobic condition, the respiratory chain stops, therefore, the NADH2 produced during the breakdown of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate cannot enter respiratory chain and is therefore unable to produce 3 ATPs. Instead, this NADH2 reduces pyruvate to lactate and itself becomes NAD. This NAD is reutilized in the reaction of glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. Thus, it keeps the pathway running for some time in aerobic conditions. When anaerobic conditions abate, respiratory chain becomes active. Lactate is converted back to pyruvate, and the same NAD takes back the hydrogen and becomes NADH2 and then gives three ATPs through respiratory chain. What is substrate level phosphorylation? When an ATP is formed directly from phosphorylation of ADP with phosphate without entering into the respiratory chain, this ATP formation and phosphorylation is called substrate level phosphorylation. Clinical importance of sodium fluoride. Sodium fluoride is used, along with potassium oxalate, for collection of blood for glucose estimation. If potassium oxalate is used alone, then in vitro glycolysis will reduce the glucose value in the sample. Functions of fluoride. Fluoride inhibits in vitro glycolysis by inhibiting enzyme enolase. Fluoride also acts as anticoagulant. It also acts as an antiseptic.